Well, I think what we do, what we certainly do have is we have a, the UK has a right to comment um, on the way that those um, uh, commitments have been implemented. So you know, there's, as you know, in the, the the JD, you know, Article Three spells out China's um, uh, commitments that it makes for the period after 1997. And I think if the UK government feels that those commitments um, you know, have not been upheld. It certainly has the right to speak out, and maybe yeah, it should. It should speak out. So I mean, I don't want to get too hung up on the word on the word moral, but um, yeah, it should it should speak out, particularly if there's some egregious um, breach of those terms. I, I I totally agree with that. Now, what we what the UK can't do though is, if you like, um, because we don't have the leverage to do it, really, is to make sure that those commitments um, are. Uh, are, are upheld. I mean, one can speak out. And that, that, that is why I sort of look at it more in terms of, of, of politics. You know, it's, it's, it's more of a political statement than you're speaking out because you feel that, that, that you know, this, this provision, this commitment has, has not, been, not been upheld. But as I said, I don't want to get too hung up on the, on, on the sort of semantics of it. But yeah, so um, absolutely. And I think that, you know, the UK um, is doing the right thing in continuing to, to follow the implementation of the Joint Declaration and to publish six monthly reports to Parliament. Um, um, but, you know, which but very briefly, to finally, I mean, what you, I think your line of argument, if I may paraphrase, is that uh, I agree we don't want to get hung up on semantics, but what you're saying is, is that, that as far as you're concerned, because you do not consider that there has been a breach, then you have no problem with the government's response thus far? I'm not, well... I have no problem with the government saying there's been no breach um, because I don't consider there's a breach. That's certainly true. But no, I, I, I mean, actually, I think that I, I think that the government um, uh, should and could have been clearer earlier about what its position was on some of these things, including the white paper, for example, the six monthly report for the first half of this year, um, really sat on the fence on the white paper. Um, uh, and uh, I don't think you know you needed to sit on the fence on that. I think the, the, the government could and should have come to a, come to a view. Um, you know the question of um, uh, compatibility of the current arrangements with um, with the joint declaration. I mean, why, well, you know, the government could could come out with a clearer uh, and earlier statement on 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 those questions. So I'm not sort of, um, you know, I'm certainly not wanting to, um, you know, if you like, sort of give blanket blanket approval to the way that the that the, the government has reacted. I mean, I guess the politics are, are, are the issue um, and the the concern not to. Uh, um, not not to speak out in a way that might be criticised by um, uh, by pro democracy protesters. Um, hence the fence sitting. I have to confess I'm wrestling slightly with the, between the, the difference between a moral statement and a political statement. Um, a, a political statement can be moral. Can a moral statement be political? Yes. Well, that gets what's sure. Going. Yeah. <laughs> it depends who makes it. Well, necessary and sufficient conditions. I mean, you know, just because a moral statement could be political and a political one could be moral doesn't mean that they're, they're the same. But anyway, as I say, I don't want to. Um, I don't want to get too hung up on the semantics. But I, in terms of characterising this, it strikes me that that the debate has been about the UK's legal commitments and moral commitments, and less about. The, the, the politics of that, and and there's been less of an, of an analysis of what UK interests are um, in this, and I mean, you know, perhaps sort of put another argument out there. I mean, UK interests could actually be. Um, I mean, maybe one could even argue there's a sort of moral obligation on the UK to take positions which are clearly consistent with what is set out in the JD and the Basic Law. Um, because those were documents that, that, in the first case, we signed, and the second case, we assented to. Now, I'm mean, slightly provocative in putting that that argument out there, but the conclusion of that would be that, we, you know, the obligation was um, uh, to support um, uh, to support in the developments as long as they were in line with with, with those two documents. Um, Tim, we welcome provocative arguments, so don't worry about it. <laughs> um, time time is up for us. Um, thank, thank you very much. I rather gather we messed you around a bit on the timing of this thing, so apologies for that. And but, but it's been really helpful to have a a slightly different angle on the whole debate, and so you've made an invaluable contribution. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Well, thank you. That, that, that that is a pleasure, and I've tried to give slightly different angles throughout the yeah. the, the, the summer. So um, I hope it's helpful. Thank All you. Right, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hmm.